What's up, everyone? How you guys and gals doing? Welcome to the show. We're going to be talking about this case of Derek McGuire. He is the pagan that just learned his fate in a bogus case. Bogus case. That is coming up, man, right now. As you know, I'm on a different uh, recording platform right now. I think it's uh, better with the camera and stuff like that. That OBS sucks. The big one. So what I am talking about is the case of Derek McGuire today. He was just sentenced to 20 years in prison, 10 of them being suspended. But during this whole time, he was on an ankle bracelet did nothing so i'm wondering why in the heck that he had to do this plea deal if the state during this whole case was really screwed up uh it came out that they actually obtained a wiretapping uh it didn't supposed to be that way and the judge said hey you can't use this in evidence but the state kept on pushing now, if you don't know who uh, McGuire is, let me uh, add this to the stream here right now. And this was the start of it. And I believe this uh, was in the journal. And it was updated February 2nd. And here is what happened. Oh, well, I guess he did violate bail. Uh, I, uh, I didn't think he did. But anyway... Alleged leader of outlaw pagans, and here it is, motorcycle gang, as they always do. See, when they use motorcycle gang in these type of proceedings, it just turns the jurors from being middle of the road. Hey, let's see. Let's see if they got the evidence, be, you know, of reasonable doubt. And it turns them against the defendant right away when they use this motorcycle gang crap. But anyway, uh, returns to uh, prison after violating bail. This according to Katie Mulva uh, Mulvaney out of the province journal at the time. Now, it goes on to say the North Smithfield man authorities identify as a leader of a notorious outlaw motorcycle gang is back behind bars after admitting he consorted with fellow gang members. See how they really tee off on this argument and this article? Some with criminal records while sentenced to home confinement. So I have to correct the story and say, yes, he was taken back off. But anyway, Derek Tuna McGuire had been on home confinement with electronic monitoring since a July 2019 Superior Court ruling that struck the key wiretap evidence against him and his associates in a uh, sprawling drug trafficking and firearms case. I believe that articles like this directly in uh, you know affect the judicial system. I am kind of pissed because this was an illegal wiretap. Why wasn't the case dropped? Because the reason is these government agencies have such a hard on for those in motorcycle clubs, it's unbelievable. Now, you can argue even the First Amendment here, where, hey, wait a second. Wait, time out. I thought we'd associate with who we want. Oh, that's right, until you get in front of a judge and he tells you different, right? It, it, it's obscene, if you ask me, that damn rule. Uh, McGuire, the alleged leader, alleged leader of the Pagans Motorcycle Club chapter in Rhode Island, uh, they talk about how he returned to the uh, adult correctional institution for 45 days after admitting Monday failing to keep the peace by spending time with people with criminal records, a violation of his bail term. So I don't know if he was on home confinement after the 45 days. We'll probably see that in the next article. But do you know what I mean? How is it they can say, hey, don't associate with people 
that have criminal records, like there's some kind of bad people out there. You have people that done their time, paid their debts to society, and next thing you know, it's like they're blacklisted. That's insanity in this country. I believe if you fulfill your duty to serve your time, pay your debt to society, your rights should be reinstated. That goes for guns, all that type of stuff. And that is a debate in itself, depending on the crime, people could say. But at least your voting privileges, at the bare minimum, should be reinstated if you did your time. So, the what is it here? 30 members from the New York Pagans a Club were expected to attend. It goes all into that type of stuff. And then here is the updated information. Local leader uh, or leader of a local biker gang. See, I'm getting uh, frizzled here because I'm pissed off about this one gets 20 years in a plea deal. This, according to WPRI.com, Melina Da Silvia, huh. <laughs> uh, the suspected leader of a local biker gang, entered a change of plea Thursday on several charges. And it's funny. They go on to say Derek McGuire, who is believed to be president of the Pagans Motorcycle Gang, as they call it again, pleaded guilty to nine counts, including cocaine possession, firearm possession, conspiracy, and giving false statement. Wow, that's a real one right there, a false statement. Look at all these guys and gals up at the federal level who lies to the FBI, and they get to walk. Tell me that isn't, that isn't hypocritical. As part of the plea deal, he was sentenced to 20 years with 10 to serve and the rest suspended. You know, we're going to go to a video right now and check that out before we get right back. In drug charges. Derek McGuire pleaded guilty to nine counts this morning in Superior Court. A judge chose not to allow cameras inside today, but did allow a 12 News crew to listen in. 12 News reporter Alexandra Leslie joins us live outside of the Superior Court where McGuire was sentenced and she has new reaction from Rhode Island's Attorney General Peter Nerona. Well, a judge sentenced Derek McGuire to 20 years with 10 to serve and the rest suspended. Attorney General Nerona told me that he felt this was all well warranted. This is video of Derek Tuna McGuire back when he was arraigned in May of 2018 in what Rhode Island State Police then called the single largest takedown in state police history, dubbed Operation Patched Out, named for the patches gang members wear. Credit goes to the state police for putting this investigation and the prosecutors for being as dogged as they were and making sure that notwithstanding those bumps in the road, justice was served today. The bumps in the road Attorney General Peter Nerona is referring to was when state police wiretapped the phone of McGuire and other alleged gang members for a year. Earlier this year, the state Supreme Court said key evidence had to be suppressed after authorizations for wiretaps were improperly approved. What we committed to do at that point was to go back and build this case without that evidence if need be, and that's exactly what we did. At the time, McGuire was charged with 221 counts related to drugs, firearms, and fraud. In court Thursday, the now 38-year-old pleaded guilty to nine of those counts, including six counts of conspiracy, cocaine possession, firearm possession, and giving a false statement. McGuire declined to make a statement in court when given the opportunity today. He was remanded into custody at the end of this morning's hearing. And people are going to go and say, Hollywood, why are you so upset? They suspended 10 years on this, which you can look at it both ways, I guess. You know, he was out for three years uh, after the thing on uh, home confinement and stuff. They're using that as part of the time. So he got an extra seven years off. I guess you can make that argument. I guess you can. The biggest thing with me is you beat him down in the media and it tainted a jury where he had no choice but to accept a plea deal. 
And that shouldn't be the justice in this country. When you're trying to fight your innocence, well, here's a plea deal or we're going to offer more time if you go to trial. That shouldn't be the case, man. If they're offering you a plea deal, that should be the same punishment that you get if you go to trial and lose. But that, that's not how the system works. I get it. But at the same time, where is the fairness in that kind of sentencing? Now, drug charges like he had over there, uh, come uh, the purge law here in Illinois on the first, maybe it would have got thrown out. Who knows? I get it. States' rights and all that type of stuff, you make your own laws. I get it. I do. But at the same time, there has to be some type of fairness in this. And one of the things that really sucked on the East Coast was the New Jersey Crime Commission. They push all this stuff because certain people do some clown crap and they put it on a club. And when you have something worth fighting for, like in this case, all they want to do is use the club against them. A motorcycle gang. Ain't that what they always go to? And it's starting to be like redundant, isn't it? It's like, really? It's a freaking club. You got bad apples out there just like you do in the ATF, FBI, DEA, state, and local cops. But God forbid you guys actually go down the middle and put out a good article that says, yes, this guy was a member of the club, but the club didn't do this on an organized level. I don't think it's ever going to happen. I think uh, I'm actually uh, being uh, unwise and saying that because it won't happen. Anyway, we're going to go to the second half of the show. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section. And we've been having daily polls in the chat room. Make sure you take that poll, man. It's good stuff. Really good stuff. We'll be right back after this music break, baby. Music. 